Hey gang, it's Doug with Doug's Timeshare Travels. Today we are taking a day trip out of Vail, Colorado to the old mining town of Tin Cup, Colorado. Tin Cup is listed as a ghost town. However, it still has a handful of residents that live here mostly in the summertime and a few that live here or supposedly live here uh, year round. Um, I find the description of it being a ghost town somewhat misleading. Most of these uh, residences here, most of these buildings are very well maintained and it is all private property. So it's not really one of those towns uh, where you could get out and walk around and explore. Tin Cup is one of uh, several mining towns that are in the area. They're connected by mountain passes. So there's a lot of off-roading between the passes and up to the old mines that goes on in this area. In its heyday, I believe Tin Cup had about 1,500 residents. It was a lawless town, never really had any established um, law officers, although there is records of uh, one sheriff and I believe two marshals that were killed in town and buried in the cemetery. Our primary uh, reason for coming up to Tin Cup today was to uh, visit the cemetery. In October, coming over Cottonwood Pass, it's a very pleasant drive. You get to uh, see a lot of the changing colors of the aspens. On the right-hand side there, that uh, during the summer months, that building is, I believe, a restaurant. It closes down either early October or late September. As you can see, it's all boarded up. So it's a rather short drive through the town. As you can see, there really wasn't much there to, uh, to visit. Our primary reason was to come up and visit the old cemetery. The cemetery is a little dicier of a drive getting up there, but again, we had a, uh, a rental mid-size SUV. I think we were in a GMC terrain this time. And we didn't have too much trouble getting up to the cemetery. The cemetery is a very quiet place has uh, about the only sound you hear is the wind coming through the trees and there is a, a little brook that uh, flows around the, the knolls of the cemetery. The cemetery is divided into three sections. The first section here just off to the left is also the smallest section and this would be the Jewish knoll. Part of the problem that um, they have with this cemetery is it's so old and there's not complete records, so they don't know where all of the uh, burial sites are. In this area, I could only find uh, two burial sites. One of them had a more modern marker. And then towards the end, there is a more uh, old timeish marker. Looking for a little bit of history of the cemetery, I found that there, were, uh, there was a Jewish family that lived in town and had a tailoring shop, and they had three of their children buried up in this cemetery.
So coming back down off of the Jewish knoll, <clears throat> we're going to take this little boardwalk here, and you'll be able to see the uh, the little brook or creek that uh, kind of runs around and through the cemetery. Now this is uh, mid October. So the mountain runoff is uh, long gone. I suspect this is about as low as this little creek gets. They do have a little box there where you can contribute to the uh, restoration and maintenance of the cemetery. This part here is uh, known as Boot Hill or Catholic Knoll. And it is a uh, larger area of the cemetery. In fact, it goes quite a ways back. Now those three crosses there, I thought were probably older grave markers. When you get up on top of the knoll, you'll find that there's uh, more modern markers behind them. So they're not, uh, they're made to look like an uh, old grave, but they're not. This uh, cemetery has a mixture of graves dating back to the late 1800s to more modern markers. Some of these older markers you can, uh, they've redone <clears throat> where they know who's buried there. Uh, they'll put their names and if known, date of birth and date of death. And then of course, like I said, there are some more modern markers of people who have ties to Tin Cup. They no longer allow full body burials in the cemetery because they have no idea of where all the old grave sites are. And there's a fear of disturbing some of the old grave sites. They do allow memorial markers to be placed uh, as well as ashes to be scattered or even buried. At first glance, Catholic Knoll looks like it would be a relatively uh, small burial area. But as you can see, there's a little boardwalk that leads back here. And the area of the cemetery is actually uh, very extensive. So this area is still part of the uh, Catholic Knoll or Boot Hill. As you can 
see interspaced with the newer markers, you have uh, some of the old grave markers here. Now, of course, those old wooden markers aren't the original markers. There's no way they would have survived the elements all these years. And this is the uh, first burial in um, the cemetery here was that marker right there. So some of these newer markers, as you can see, that one was uh, from a gentleman that lived from 1855 to 1907. So they have apparently put some of the newer markers on some of the old graves to make it a more permanent marker for the people buried there. This is going to be the uh, third section of the cemetery. And this would be a uh, Protestant knoll. There are some uh, few benches to uh, sit down on. Uh, this town uh, of Tin Cup is above 10,000 foot in elevation. If you're not used to that elevation, even a slow, gentle walk uh, can kind of take the wind out of you. With all the trees and everything here, it's really sometimes difficult to believe that this is a cemetery. Here they've placed a couple of very simple markers. I would imagine in the future they may put something a little bit more substantial there. But for now, that's, uh, those markers are there to uh, make it easier for them to remember who's buried there in the future. And maybe put a... Uh, more substantial marker up. Again, it's a little odd that uh, we've gone through several of the, um, the turn of the century cemeteries over the years in our travels. And this one was a little uh, unique with uh, its blend of uh, modern stones, dates of death in the uh, 2000s, as well as the uh, number of trees and the scattered graves. There just never, there did not seem to be any real rhyme or reason. The graves were not in rows. They were just, it's like someone just uh, randomly picked spots.
the Protestant area of the cemetery did seem to be a little bit more well organized. Perhaps it's a little more protected from the elements because there was a lot more of the uh, grave sites that still had the wooden structures and the metal structures around them. Although, as you can see, a lot of the uh, old wooden tombstones are, have long since been erased. This little plot here, someone had uh, put a couple of more permanent stones in. Some of the uh, wood from a bad windstorm that went through a few years back. They're still cleaning up a bunch of that. There's another big pile of brush that they've, uh, of trees that they've had uh, that were blown over by the wind that they've uh, cut down and they're trying to get removed from the, uh, from the cemetery. Overall, it was a pleasant trip. We really enjoyed our walk and our time spent here. It provided some magnificent views. It was kind of interesting reading some of the older stones. There's some uh, some newer stones that uh, were more unique. One that uh, I managed to inadvertently leave out of this video was the uh, the beekeepers. They have. Um, there's a grave marker that uh, looks like a bunch of beehives. And according to that marker, they have yet to be occupied. So it's a burial site uh, for future use. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, video of our walk through the uh, Tin Cup Cemetery. We uh, post a lot of videos of our travels, places we stay, hotels, timeshares, uh, and the surrounding area. If you like videos like this, I invite you to like and subscribe to my channels. Until next time, guys, safe travels.